we can write the vector equation of a line quite straightforward. Um, we just need to know where we start and where we finish. So maybe that's a good place to start. Ha <laughs> ha, watch, I can, I can do x, y coordinates. And all I need to do is start somewhere. So maybe I start here. And then I just go in some direction like that. So that right there could be where I go. So basically, this is the whole idea here. Right here is where you start. So start here. And after that, this one right here, this is just the direction that you go. This one here is go in this direction. That's really the idea here, go in this direction. Well, I'm not writing it very well, but there we go. So go in this direction. This is the main idea here. Start here and just go in that direction. So we have a way of actually defining it. The official way to define it uh, usually is with some vector that we call R. But it can be any other name if you want. But it really, in general, goes like this. And it doesn't have to be in this exact form. But um, well, I'm going to write it this way. So we're going to have R equals A plus T B. This is the main sort of vector equation for a line. This is it. Now what does this represent? Um, this represents, okay, right over here, we call this one right here, A, this is called your position vector. And this is where you start. So we could make a vector uh, going from, let's say you started here, I could have made a vector that start, that gets me here, right? So from the origin to here. So let's say I call this one right here, this point right here, let's say was called A, the like capital A. And then this right here, this is the origin. And then I could actually make a little vector here that gets me from here to here. That would be, that would be that vector A here, right? That'd be the vector that gets me from here to here. That gets me where I get started. Uh, but then I have to actually you know, go in some direction. So this t here, that's just some sort of constant. Okay, that's just that's just a whoops, my j sort of seems to have a little head there. There we go. So just a constant. So this could be any number. This could be anything here. This is any old scalar, any number. Remember that one doesn't have a vector symbol on top of it, whereas this one over here does. Okay, so this one right here, what does that one mean, that b? That is what's called your direction vector. So this tells you in what direction to travel. This is your direction vector. So this is really kind of, you know, where you point. And the first one, your position vector, that's where you start. So you basically got to start somewhere and then point somewhere else from there. So basically it tells you start over here, but then point in that other direction. And this is sort of how you can deal with this. Now, if this represents a moving object and T then represents time, then we've got, um, we've got another thing we can say about it. Then we can say that B is called something else, and now it has a special name. It's called a velocity vector. So it tells you in which direction your velocity is. Okay, that's your velocity vector. And you can go even further. If you want to do the actual sort of length of your velocity, in other words, what's the actual sort of this value right here, this length of this velocity vector, that actually, uh, we can designate that as, remember, we learned this before in other videos, that's the magnitude of it, that's actually called your speed. And that will be measured in meters per second. So this is also something you can do. So remember, that's your speed. And don't forget that this little thing here is contained in there. Remember that uh, square root of, let's say, b1 squared plus b2 squared plus b3 squared, and so on. That's, remember, that's how we find, that's how we find the magnitude of b. Remember, we just take all the components, so we take the sum of the square, uh, sorry, the square root of the sum of all the squares of the components of it. So that's how we deal with this. And that's really all there is. So you just got to remember the vector equation of a line, r equals a plus tb. Now we could, of course, rewrite it in component form if we wanted. Um, and it may even help to be able to write things in parametric equations. We've done this before in other videos. I just want to show you this. This is sort of, I think of it as, you know, walking along the top. So let's say I have, a, this could be a vector equation of a line. This is x, y. See, that's this form. That's this r here. 
And I could say that x, y is equal to 1, negative 2, that's your start point, plus t times, and this right here is your direction vector, just like we talked about up here. Okay, so it's in that same form. So as a result, uh, what I can do, I can sort of walk along the top here. So I can make an equation for the, um, the top. So I can say x equals 1 plus t times 7, or 7t. So I can say that x equals 1 plus 7t. I can maybe put a little line through it. And then we got the uh, same way, y equals negative 2 plus 3t. So sometimes this might help you. So these are these are some separate equations. You can say this is the case and this is the case. Or you can put them all together in this beautiful form. These are what are called parametric equations. Those are these right here. Those might help you out when you're solving questions uh, given information about vector equations of lines. So maybe let's do one. This is actually hopefully a very, very easy one. Uh, let's write the vector equation and the parametric, parametric equations for the line passing through this point, 1, 5. And let's give it a direction of 3, 2. Of course, I could have drawn this and all this stuff, but I think we've gotten used to this by now, that when we have a point that's at 1, 5, we can automatically write it. Remember, if it goes like this right here, and this point is at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, yeah, something like this right here. If this right here is my point, I can make a vector getting me to there. And because of that, this is from O to that point, I don't know, maybe I call that point P uh, for point. Uh, then I can make myself a small vector, then it goes from O to P, and that would, there would be my vector. And in that case, then it would have the dimensions, or sort of the components, 1, 5, but this time it would be as a column, just like it's supposed to. So I can write myself in this form, R equals A plus T, B. I can say, well, my R... That's going to be my just x, y coordinates, just like in the last example. So I can say x, y equals my starting point, but this time the vector version of my start point, which is this, plus t times my direction vector, which is just 3, 2. That was amazingly easy. I'm done with the first part of it, which is to write the vector equation. That's fine. Now what if I want to write the parametric equations? What do I do for those? Let's see. Here I can just write down two equations from this. So x equals 1 plus t times 3. In other words, x equals 1 plus 3t. Another equation I can do is walk along the bottom, so to speak. So y equals 5 plus t times 2. So I can write that one down. y equals 5 plus, instead of t times 2, I'm going to say 2t. Because that's the convention. So there are my parametric equations. There's two of those. Well, that's it. So now we can go a little bit further, and you'll see that this stuff, although they may seem complicated, they can be quite simple once you know what you're doing. So here's an example that I did. Uh, this is with a Velociraptor, uh, if you remember the movies uh, about Jurassic Park. And I think there's a new movie called Jurassic World, at least at the time that I make this. It's uh, coming out fairly soon. Um, these velociraptors were thought to be, you know, something dangerous, at least so they did in the films. But it turns out they're about the size of a turkey and they probably had feathers and things like that. But, oh well, let's just keep it. This is actually a diagram uh, drawing, I think, from, I think it's from XKCD, I'm not sure, but it seems to be. Um, so we have this equation. This right here is an equation for a, this is a vector of equation for a sprinting velociraptor. We're going to assume that time t greater than zero and it's in seconds. So what is the velociraptor's initial position? Well, this is the position vector, minus 1352, but of course I can just write it as a coordinate pair, which is just minus 13, comma, 52. So if I was to try to draw this, I could, of course, draw it. I just have to find out where minus 13 is, which is you know, somewhere over there, and way up here at plus 52. So the velociraptor starts somewhere way up there, you know, up at 52. All right, that was a little bit boring and quite simple. What about the velociraptor's velocity vector? I thought that was kind of funny, the velociraptor's velocity vector. Maybe we can call it the velocity vector. I don't know. But, of course, that's just this value right here. This velocity vector is just 6, negative 8. This just tells you it's in that direction that he runs. So see, he starts off at this point, and then he runs in that direction. So go over 6 and down 8. And what is his speed? Oh, well, this down, now we can do this. We've learned this, that if 
this represents a moving object or a moving you know dinosaur like it does then the speed is the length of that velocity vector so that we can calculate that means all we need to know now is just this we just need to know this the magnitude of the velocity vector so in this case here it's going to be the square root of a sum of the squares so six squared uh, plus negative eight squared and we hopefully know that six squared is 36 8 squared, or negative 8 squared, is positive 64. So then I have 36 plus 64. What's that? That Oh, that works out nicely. That's 100. So that means the square root of 100 is just 10. So that means he goes 10 meters per second. That's actually really fast. I wonder if they could actually run that fast. Uh, so that's the velociraptor's speed. That's the magnitude of its velocity vector. And finally, well, almost finally, actually, we're nearly done. We can talk about parallel lines. Now, we can say that two lines are parallel if they have the same direction vector. That we can say. Um, in other words, the velocity vector. But I, uh, So those would be two lines, you know, going maybe like this right here and maybe another one like this right here. So different start point, maybe, but maybe they have the same direction vector. Uh, the key thing, though, here is that the angle between them this is actually something maybe important to do. You could easily calculate the angle between them because we've learned how to do that in another video, right? With a dot product, we can find the angle, the angle theta between them. And the angle between them then must be zero. That's what we have to sort of find, is that, you know, if the angle between them is zero, then you know that they're parallel lines. Whereas two lines are coincidental, this is a different case. This is if they are parallel, so there's two things you need here. If they are parallel to each other, in other words, just like before, they have to have the same, uh, so in other words, the theta is equal to zero, you know, between them, the angle between them is zero, and they have the same start point. This is really important here. So same, um, sort of start point, I can say same uh, position vector, we could say, oh, yeah, we could say start point. That's fine. So this is the key things here. In other words, just like over here where we learned about them, how, uh, whoops, right here, how they have, this so here's your position vector or your start point. Uh, we could say that here, same start point. Actually, maybe I think I do prefer position vector. So they have to have the same position vector. See, in the last example, I showed you uh, two lines or vector equations of lines that are supposed to be parallel to each other but they didn't have the same start point see they're beside each other whereas in this case here what i mean is is quite literally that these two this one right here let's say and then you draw another one right on top of it of course then they must have the same start point and they both start at the same place uh, but I've, I could, of course, have two that have the same start point, but then different velocity vectors, or in other words, you know, two different directions that they point. These are clearly not the same lines because they, they're not parallel, right? There is an angle between them that's not zero. So clearly that's not the case. So they must be parallel to each other and have a same start point. Then we know they're coincidental. In other words, they coincide. They are the same line. That's all there is to vector equations of lines, I think, as far as the theory goes. Um, I'm going to do another set of videos, I think, on what to do about intersecting lines, because that's not necessarily so trivial. But you have all the tools you need right here to solve just about everything you need to do with vector equations of lines.